Looked like it was going to be all momentum right there, but great answer from Felipe. Best wave he's had in this event so far. Yeah, I mean, those are the kind of battles that you need to win if you want to be a world champion. Felipe Toledo, number one in the rankings coming into this final event in Tahiti, but Felipe wants to hang on to that number one ranking. Toledo right behind him, dragging his body, pulling into this section, and Toledo able to answer back. So what a great exchange right at the beginning of this heat. Take a look at Felipe Toledo on the answer back. Oh, it's so cool that he's gotten the opportunity here, and he did exactly what he needed to do. He stayed in the barrel as long as possible. That wave had the curve in it. Nice, easy drop to take off and set it up. Again, backside, you're able to control your speed so much easier than you are on the forehand. I felt like that was a little bit more of an exchange in favor of Felipe. A little bit longer, but look at this wave as it curves around the reef. That is why this wave is so special. It just bends and curves and it takes all that deep water and lifts it and grows as it goes down. Such an amazing wave with these offshore breezes. Oh man, epic answer. Outer known Tahiti Pro, Nathan Hedge stroking into this one at the end of the road, deep in the barrel and edgy is able to strike first in his matchup against Another look at the opener, starting with Nathan Hedge. Well, and you saw that he was underneath and a little bit deeper. This was Nathan's wave, and he loves it. He was actually pointing to the channel before he even came out of the barrel. This is perfect waves for this man right here. He loves this wave. He's had 10-point rides out here. He's been into the trials. He's fun finished runner-up for years. And just getting a chance here at 43 to go up against the number one surfer ranked right now in Felipe. You'd have to say that this is a very evenly matched. Even though Nathan hasn't had a lot of championship tour experience recently, he knows this wave so well. well and you can tell with his approach, pump off the bottom, and his comfort navigating a big barrel here at Te Aupo'o. He had his early round heat today, got some great waves, ended up in the elimination round, had to surf against Kelly Slater, who had just a better heat, but uh, he put on a performance, and here he is again doing the same thing. As I thought, and here's Nathan Hedge live. Back, way back in the barrel, way back, and a net set for Nathan Hedge. Oh, we had the same scream. Oh, my God. That was nuts. That, you okay, Kaipo? I, well, this is the <laughs> kind of waves that surprise us that we have the pleasure to call live. Nathan Hedge yes. in the cavern, had yes. the headlamp on, <laughs> spelunking through that cavern, and he found daylight at the end. I mean, let's take a look at it again here. Forehand, this is the type of wave that forehand's gonna help you. You just have all these sections. You're able to pump and pump and pump, and he's out of there. That is so <laughs> mental. <laughs> One more time to see if he, I mean, he's got to disappear from view on this even angle. Again, look at it, gyrating through the foam ball. One more time, through the foam ball again. Incredible. Go, go, oh, 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 I made it. <laughs> that sounded just like me, huh? <laughs> That's exactly what I did here in the booth. <laughs> oh, that was sick. One of a great moments here at the end of the road. Nathan Hedge providing that moment. Oh, uh, look, and it turns the corner here and actually goes for a full, I mean, you can see it bending in this wave. I mean, I don't know where he is. He's back there, he, like you said, with the headlamp. Kaipo owns a headlamp. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And that feels so good. Is this the first perfect 10? <laughs> I, I mean, what more do you need to do? I guess the only thing that you could dock him for is a little bit of that misstep with the foot, but he definitely went complete in the end. Yeah, and you can see the elation from Nathan Hedge exiting in the channel. At, at the very end of that thing, he was on the foam ball, drifting down to the bottom of the wave and somehow kept the control going. Incredible. Now remember, Nathan Hedge, back to live action, and Felipe Toledo pulls on the curtain, travels through a barrel here at Te Aupo'o. So answer back for Felipe Toledo, looking for 8.77 to retake the lead off of Nathan Hedge. We'll get to that explanation after we enjoy this replay. Beautiful well wooden wave from Felipe. Again, this morning he did not go to plan, and this one much better. Uh, he's putting on a performance here. He has that talent to be able to do well here. Damian Hobgood in the semifinals 
and his first wave in the final against CJ Hobgood, he dislocated his shoulder, so he had a runner-up finish that year, Nathan Hedge, but already has proven with his track record that he is a menace out here to the other competitors when it comes to Tahiti. 27 minutes here on the clock with our first heat of the elimination round, and Nathan Hedge, a dangerous wild card in the lead over Felipe Toledo. Toledo, knifing into this one, traveling, wants to stall through the barrel, spit over Toledo, and he comes out, shaking his fist into the channel. Again, Felipe Toledo needs an 8.77 to take the lead off of Nathan Hedge. Nice, solid drop, good read on the wave. Positioning on the lineup was awesome. I just don't think it's quite enough to get to that 8.77. Excellent numbers are have to come with a slightly bigger wave and a slightly longer barrel. Still a great wave, was able to have the spit on him and get out. So the performance is there. It's just, uh, unfortunately, that, that first wave or second wave of Nathan Hedge was just so special. I mean, really, when we look at this in, in slow motion, Felipe Toledo doing all that he could possibly do on this wave. That's so true. I mean, again, getting tight and compact. You can see he's got his bum against the wall. That's the speed control. You can actually put it deeper in to slow yourself down. You can put that forearm there to stabilize yourself with the hand on the rail. All of that gives you the ability to have great speed control. He did pretty much all he could do to get the number needed, and he almost got there. And he's up against the challenge in Seth Moniz. Remember 2019, Seth Moniz surfed to a semi-final finish. So he's already proven here. Hedgy up and down. So there was a use of priority for Nathan Hedge. And pretty brutal wipeout as well. Yes, he's had a couple today. We got some waves coming through more out of the, the south element. We'll see if there's any takers here. Nathan Hedge stalling. Double arm drag, no problem for Hedgy. And I don't know if that's going to improve upon his scoreline, but he's just showing that he's a master out here. Nathan Hedge pretty relaxed right now. Yeah, well, after that wipeout, this is a nice one to settle your nerves again. I don't see it going much higher than his 6.33, but just great technique. And you see the forehand, it's a little bit more difficult to use that speed control. You know, surfers have been developing the hand drag where it's just usually one arm, and you just kind of arm like the Johnny Boy stall, where you can just put your whole arm in there. This is a little bit tougher to get both, you know, one arm dragging and slow you down, but he can see the uses the front arm and actually uses two hands for the handbrake. It's not as easy to get yourself to slow down as it is when you're putting your whole bum and your shoulder in there to slow down. So the backhanders have a little bit easier way of slowing down, but forehanders definitely have the ability to be much faster in the barrel. Yeah, just the 4.5 for this way. Toledo, important wave, drives through the bottom, grabs rail, stalls, and kicks out. Successful ride for Felipe Toledo, a meaty wave. I don't know if that was a deep enough tube to get that 7.94, your thoughts, Peter? Here you go, this is, see, this is it, like, this is a meaty takeoff, and look, he's stalling, 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 but we saw him the whole time. Yeah, I just don't see this going upwards into the exit range. But just great technique. Again, he got the opportunity. I don't know if that wave even had the 7.94 in it. Maybe if he was five feet deeper. But again, look at the technique. Again, wide stance, hand planted on the rail, dragging the bum. That's the stalling technique. Look at, he's got the arm in front, stability. Everything's there. Look at the technique. It's impeccable. It really is. He's not going to get knocked off. And you see, he's just dragging it, letting it go, dragging it. And that's the speed control. He's just like, you know, pulling the handbrake a little bit at a time. But yeah, he was pretty visible for the most part. Yeah, I just don't see it going all the way up there to a, a 7.94. Yeah, coming out of this replay, the number did drop a 5.93. So Felipe Toledo still chasing that 7.94. I mean, I wrote him off. And Felipe Toledo right behind him, staying busy. That was crazy. Uh, Seth somehow <laughs> was able to get through that one. And we saw, we've seen that a couple times here at Teopo'o where you, you, you write the surfer off and, and they come out. I mean, in this heat, prime example. I felt like Nathan was not gonna get through that one and he did. Felipe Toledo is out of competition. Nathan Hedge on to the round 16. Wow. Number one seed out with a 17th spot. Crazy kikes. So we'll see Felipe Toledo at the Rip Curl WSL Finals. Where will he end up in the seeding? 
That is yet to be determined. What thing for sure?